On today's episode, we give you our three favorite stacks, wide receivers, and the quarterback position based on their current ADP. We jump into the mailbag with your questions, and Jason gets another nickname. Make sure you like, subscribe, leave some comments about Jason's brand new nickname. Enjoy. Hey, this is Patrick Mahomes, quarterback for the Kansas City Chiefs, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Thursday, June 29th. Mike Wright, the fantasy hitman himself, in the building. Jason Moore, Andy Holloway. Jason like, still head bobbing. I liked my intro. It was like, Mike, the fantasy hitman, right? He's here in the building. Jason's here, too. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Jason. Yeah. Uh, don't, hey, guys, don't worry about me, okay? You move on. Just talk all of a your, little bit more about Mike. All of your nicknames, are they're, they're there for a day or two. Yeah. And they're gone. I could have gone... The Squatch. The Quatch is back, or whatever it was. Well, big uh, big shimmy. Yeah. Double stuff. Yeah. Big gravy. Nothing's really a big gravy. Yeah. That's more. Isn't that around here? Yeah, that's foosball. I mean, if you have something, Mike named himself 10 years ago, so. I, actually, I was thinking about this, uh -oh. and I thought uh -oh. of a nickname that I wanted. Oh. Like, I, I want to take it. This is big news. Completely, forever. The Fantasy Hitman. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? I think I would like that. <laughs> you, you're in. Yeah. So Jason, so you're the fantasy both hit the man, fantasy right? hitman. Yeah. I don't have to take it from you, Mike. Huh. We will just share it. Yeah. It's a different. I just want some I copyright mean, it, allowance. It's like it's like boxing. I mean, so many boxers have you know like the people's champ. Yeah, or like the, uh, well, sweetness. I was thinking of uh, Walter Payton, but but there's plenty of guys in boxing who have the same nickname. Yeah. Why don't you start the intro over and give us both <laughs> what we deserve now? I don't know if I'm supporting this. I might go back to Quatch. Okay. <laughs> Whether you like I mean, it or not. If we do that, Jason, then we can be the fantasy hit men. Ooh, together. When we're in the same room. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know how I like that. Uh, welcome into the show. We've got uh, a good quick question for you today. Not a lot of news to talk about. Kind of a lull when it comes to, I mean, yeah, you can only talk about uh, hypothetical Dalvin Cook destinations and DeAndre Hopkin, Hopkins uh, trying to generate more interest money from other teams so many times so we'll just wait for that news to break but um mailbag on the show today best ball breakdown we do have a couple of announcements one it, it's big saturday the draft analyzer is out it'll be available it and it, it is i mean we've upgraded it every year <clears throat> but it's awesome like you know we're we're not only testing it but using it what on is our, it Jason? on our own teams you can if you've done any drafts uh, whether you do a mock draft, you could put it in manually, or whether you've got a league that's a dynasty league and it's done, or you do a new draft now or in draft season, you can import your rosters from uh, Sleeper, or ESPN, or Yahoo, or put them in manually, and it will grade your team. It'll give you what we think, you know, it, what is the quality of this roster. It'll talk about your strengths, your weaknesses. It'll break it down by position. It'll even tell you which one of us three ballers likes your team the most. Which yeah, I based always, on how we have players ranked. I always find interesting because, and I, I love this uh, validation in the tool, but every single time that Mike or myself or Andy uses this tool, it's always ourself. <laughs> like, it, I'm like, oh, Jason <laughs> likes my team the best because, yeah, yes, and it's there, great. Thank goodness. No personal biases at all. It's just... Just, just facts. Yeah, I mean, we did different ways to play. So that's available on Saturday with the UDK Plus. You can get the Ultimate Draft Kit at ultimatedraftkit.com. And if you have the regular UDK and you want to upgrade so you can access it, very easy to do from your account page. The Dynasty Podcast. Oh, baby. Mike tells me yesterday's episode was top it, 10. It was excellent. We, we talked about the top 10 Dynasty startup tips. We talked about uh, back in the day when you would read books to try and get a free Pizza Hut pizza. 
I do remember and it. And yeah. then I, I'm, I'm going to dap myself up. I came up with a, a very good analogy for drafting wide receivers and running backs for your dynasty startup that you don't want to miss. Okay. Check it out. The dynasty podcast once a week, Borg bets. And then one of us on the show, Mike was on yesterday's episode. You can find us on Twitter at the FF ballers. You guys ready for the quick question? Let's go. Brooks tells me we have a drop for it. Ooh. Stack attack. And we had a drop. Yeah. For it. Tasty. Uh, Favorite quarterback wide receiver stack to target based on their current average draft position? I think the based on current average draft position is very important this year because of the big three awesome quarterbacks last year. If you want one of those great quarterbacks who obviously, like who who wouldn't want a Josh Allen, Stephon Diggs stack or a Travis Kelsey, Patrick Mahomes stack or A.J. Brown and Jalen Hurts, like, yeah, those are great. They're going to cost you at least two of your first three picks. It if might not, be impossible. Your first two picks. Yeah, you might not actually be able to execute on that just because of how high they it get. is. It is very difficult. So I, I went with what um, I have the most of. It's a stack that is, to me, just about the easiest to pull off. Um, and that is the Cooper Cup Matthew Stafford stack because Cooper Cup is someone that I'm willing to take at the 102. Um, I don't think it's crazy to take him at the 101, but I've gotten him at the 109. You, as in, like, McCaffrey's this locked in? Yes, head McCaffrey cup? to okay. me is the 101. But, uh, and, and I would take Justin Jefferson in some leagues or, or, or Chase. You know, there's arguments to be made, but my point is Cup is deserving of being the number one pick, but you can sometimes get him late in the first round, usually the middle of the first round. And so there's, there's a wide area to, to grab him, d uh, depending on where you – uh, you know, our drafting, and then Stafford is free. Well, Stafford I, is so easy to grab. You can grab him a little ahead of ADP if you've got Cup and complete that stack. That's the, I think, more interesting point in that stack is like taking the shot on Stafford because of where he's ranked. I mean, quarterback 24 right now, so it is a choice to opt into that stack versus taking a shot on another quarterback later in the draft. But I think we've been saying it. Uh, I'll continue to say it until we have a reason not to. Don't underestimate, you know, Mike brought up uh, Van Jefferson um, as a, as a, was it value? Or yeah. S yeah. As a value candidate or, on, uh, the, yeah, or sleeper, on the sleeper something. episode. And, uh, and uh, uh, we haven't really mentioned his name, but Puka yeah. has been, was he a uh, Kyle fifth round pick? I don't know if I remember it off the top of my head. Fifth but, round pick. Yeah. Fifth Puka rounder. And the cow. So he's been, he's been picking up some, some buzz. Wow. Uh, that was another thing we talked about in the what Dynasty a combo, podcast. Puka and Tutu. Yeah. Oh, as yeah. two of your wide receivers. Teammates. That's fantastic. Yeah. But the uh there's been a noticeable, at least to me, I, I don't know if you guys have, have kind of perceived this, but a a in the time period of let's elevate, let's puff piece every new player on our team, there's been some high draft capital rookies who I've not heard a single thing about. Now Training camp has started, but you had rookie camps. You had all these things. You had opportunities for these beat reporters to come out and just, just, just pump the Jets for for these players. But like Jaden Reed of the Packers, you heard anything about him? No, because I'm hearing about Romeo Dobbs. Yeah. So so the fact that that Puka in the fifth round is getting some uh, some steam here as a possible starter for this team. He's he is a player that you need to keep an eye on now. Yeah. One one other rookie wide receiver that's had that is Michael Wilson out of Arizona. In terms of actually, you know, when you talk about one generating not, some buzz, generating some buzz. I'm going to follow uh, Jason's stack selection because uh, I think it's in the same vein in a lot I of like, ways. I like it. And it's the Tyreek Hill to a Tunga Vailoa stack, specifically because you, you talked about Cup. He could go as high as two or three if you wanted to. Tyreek's in that category just as much as Cooper Cup is. And, you know, we're looking at average draft position in the way that the first round is is uh, kind of happening right now. We were looking at our rankings, right? Mm -hmm. And Josh Jacobs is our consensus number three running back. But he's not. it's not like he's ranked 3-3-3 three, three, three among us. It's just that the group beyond basically CMC and Eckler, we have all over the map. I mean, I think, one, yeah. I think your number two running back, Derrick Henry, Mike. Is my number 10. Yeah, so the variation between the running backs means that you don't have this like – automatic set in stone order that the running backs are going to go. And here you have uh, wide receivers like Chase Jefferson cup and Tyreek 
and you probably put Diggs in that category, but like you know what you're getting with those guys. And so if you're going to go with the known commodity and Tyreek Hill, then Tua sitting there, like I know it from years past with Mahomes, but like when you when you stack Tyreek with a quarterback, yeah, oh, good and, things it, and good things happen on that week. But for those two, you don't lose those weeks. And so Tua is really the yeah you're you're taking a gamble with injury, the concussions. At this point, I'm moving forward with Tua, not presuming another concussion, but looking at him like a value in the draft because he's going near the ninth round. And I'll make other, I'll figure it out if he goes down. Yeah, it's it's worth. It's worth pointing out that, you know, where Tyreek goes, you know, you are going to be deciding between someone like Tyreek and Stephon Diggs or maybe even Jamar Chase. And the counterpart quarterbacks are going to cost a lot, lot more for those other guys than they do for Tua. And that that means not only does it cost you more to complete the stack, but also lower, much, much lower probability that you can complete the stack. And, yeah, you don't want to – again, I, I it might be worth talking, Mike, about general stack philosophy. This is our favorite quarterback wide receiver stack to target at current ADP, but we're not saying you always go into your draft right. targeting a stack, right? Yeah, you you don't do that. And then uh, did you guys catch the Josh Jacobs recent? And will I be happy or sad to hear it, Mike, as uh, a dynasty manager of Josh Jacobs? The word holdout has cool. surfaced. Right on. Great. <laughs> and how many fantasy points do the holdouts produce for my team? Uh, per week, I believe it's zero. Awesome. Yeah. Right around there. We're yeah. still we're still a ways off from that, but the- I mean, if you want a post mortem on the on the dynasty trade I made, and you just want to listen to how things might not go oh, perfectly, man. because we we look, you have to take gambles in dynasty. Sure. You make um, attempts to you make calculated gambles, and so I moved Alvin Cook this offseason before this all happened. Which, that seems like a home run. But I also moved Ramondre Stevenson. I did it pre-draft, and I moved those two players to get uh, Josh Jacobs. and there. I mean, there were other pieces, but Josh Jacobs and, and I think Raheem Mostert came over and Jeff Wilson. And right now, Ramondre made it through unscathed. I mean, he looks like he is yeah. locked and loaded, well, ready to go. Or Dalvin Cook ends <laughs> up on the Patriots, and you pulled off an ultimate heist. Well, yeah, or he ends up in Miami and Jeff Wilson and yep. Moster disappear. I mean, these are the hold your breath moments of dynasty leagues. But the the quote was yeah, let's hear from Pelicero. Josh Jacobs, at this point, if there's not a long-term deal, I don't anticipate jo- uh, Jacobs being there at the start of training camp, and I don't know that he shows up week one. Well, I, I'm going to choose. Still a long ways away. Do not believe that. We're a long ways away. That's but, my choice. But that's not great to hear. But back so they lose a lot of money though in the modern day oh, holdout, yes, hold yes. right? And he's on a franchise tag paying him the big bucks. So yeah, it, him it, and Saquon will be it'll be hard to watch them. Like how long was Gordon out when he actually did it? Uh, like Melvin a, Gordon. At least a month. Yeah, I think it was I want to say six weeks. Mike's got a better memory than, than six, I do. Six sounds but about I, right. I do know that in the new collective bargaining agreement, it is much more difficult. You know, you used to have holdouts all the time, but you lose a lot of money when you hold out right now. And for a running we're back just, to lose money... We're just going to hope he doesn't want to do training camp. That's what we're going to hope. Right. Yeah. Who wants to do training camp? Who wants to camp? do training camp? Let's practice. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Mike, you've got a stack for us. Uh, also, four games. So, four. Okay. Uh, congratulations to me. Uh, my stack, it it is a little bit more difficult to pull off because of ADP. You You would need something to bounce it's a it, back-to-back round stack right? it, it would have to bounce it right in your direction but i love the value of keenan allen right now as the wide receiver 17 going in the fourth round and i think we're all in on justin herbert this year having a bounce back having kellen moore come in and be his offensive coordinator having quentin johnston be the third wide receiver instead of the other guys that they've had to rely on or even the wide receiver too as Keenan Allen and Mike Williams go in and out of the lineup. But Herbert, to me, uh, of the guys that are not, you know, we talked about the big three. Justin Herbert, to me, is the one who is the least surprising if he ends up making the jump back to being a truly elite difference maker. So that's why I like him and I like that stack a little. Like Stafford could could get in there. Tua definitely could. We had a, a stretch there where it looked like Tua was, was primed to be a top five quarterback or so 
But I think that Herbert can make the jump back up there and going with Keenan Allen, who was just an absolute target machine once he got back on the field. I think that continues, and we get at least one more year of, of top-tier Keenan. And before we move on from our favorite stacks, I think, Andy, you wanted to talk about stacking in general so that the Foot Clan can know, like, should we stack? Do we need to stack? Do we have to stack? And th there are, you know, you can win fantasy a number of different ways. You want to go early round this or late round that, you can win both ways. You want zero RB, heavy RB, you can win both ways. Uh, but Matt DeSorbo, one of our uh, great writers, uh, a math wizard, did this incredible study on stacking. I taught him everything he knows. For, yes, you did. Yeah. Yes, yeah. you did, Andy. Thank you. Um, and uh, take that, Matt. <laughs> Wait, Andy. He's insulted. L just listen, Andy did this great study <laughs> Thank you. Um, on stacking. And it was because in best ball, it's pretty much widely accepted. You have to have like massive explosi Andy explosions. Andy just verbally communicated. DeSorbo was just more right. like a uh, stenographer. Exactly what happened. And so when I read Andy's words via Matt DeSorbo, <laughs> what it was is it, it really did um, indicate that even in redraft leagues, even if the players score the exact same amount of points, the fact that the variation comes with higher outputs together, it is actually a value in redraft to have a stack. Now, that does not mean that you reach for these players. Yeah, you, you don't, don't. You don't go and take jack a quarterback. knife it into your draft strategy. Not at all. You don't reach a round or two ahead of ADP. You don't. Uh, you know, force the issue and grab the stack because stacks are supposed to be good. But it's worth knowing that when you're staring down two quarterbacks and they're about the same average draft position, and you've got their wide receiver one of one yep. of those two yep. guys, that's the difference maker. Grab grab your stack. Well, and let, let me paint a different scenario because, Mike, you mentioned that you know Herbert would be one of those guys that you're not surprised pops into the top three, I would imagine. The other name there is Lamar Jackson to me. Uh, yes. Like, it, it wouldn't surprise me if Lamar Jackson – now, the stack for Lamar, if it's not Mark Andrews, it's not – it's not going to be Mark Andrews. It is Mark Andrews. <laughs> it is Mark Andrews. But if you are trying to take a shot, I get I, what I'm saying is if you have Lamar early, sure, and then you're late and you're doing the Rashad Bateman, Beckham, Zay Flowers decision making versus somebody in the same tier in the same eighth round, you might go with the player that has that correlation just for that potential upside. And let let me something we buried at the beginning. I love stacking. From a fun perspective, mm -hmm. I enjoy it when my team is built that way. Mike made a dynasty trade this offseason very much predicated on, I think, in yes, part, the was. enjoyment of combining. I mean, you had Justin Fields. You made a move to get Joe Burrow because you had Jamar Chase. It is a very fun way to play fantasy. So when you have that opportunity and then you have the math that I obviously did and DeSorbo kind of got out there, right. and you have that math to back up its upside, it can be a really uh, attractive draft strategy if you just don't force it do you think it is rude that DeSorbo's name is on that article to no, you I, Andy? I, to me it's like a pseudonym okay all right so <laughs> you, you know okay it's a pseudonym but it's a real person right <laughs> I love it's, it it's not a created fictional no, alter no. ego of me it's no. just this other guy yeah yeah but it's a pseudonym <laughs> of Andy it's a Harvard educated <laughs> other guy yeah my pseudonym yes as I would say Matt DeSorbo <laughs> yeah all right, so anything else you guys want to touch <laughs> on, on there in nope. uh, the stack discussion? All right, let's take a quick break, and we'll be right back. <laughs> Let me just say, I love you, Matt DeSorbo. Yeah. What a talent. Yeah. And welcome to the team, his brother. Yeah, uh, that's exciting. And a bunch of new writers. Check them out. Make sure you follow them on Twitter. Five? Five new Five writers? Five new writers joining the team. Joining the family. And that's a that's a competitive... They're, they're, uh, they're joining the hitmen. Oh, <laughs> gosh. See, the only comfort I have from this whole, like, bit is that your your uh, nickname's last a day. Right. And then yeah, we move on. Exactly. So this show will this have This show, it. I'm the fantasy hitman, and, and uh, <laughs> next show, I'll be something different. It's kind of a pseudonym, I would say. <laughs> right, exactly. We, 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 uh, we might need a Jason nickname shirt. Oh, that's just all my nicknames. Yes, <laughs> I mean, we have all, like every year we come it's out just with this face with, in the middle with yeah. all of the nicknames. I don't, I'm gonna make a note. All right. Yeah. Okay. Um, you ready for the mailbag? Let's go. Mailbag. Mailbag. Ooh, yeah. Jason nickname shirt. <laughs> all right. 
hopping into the mailbag. We have best ball breakdown coming up as well. If you have a question for the show, you can head to the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. Click that submit a question button, or you can dial our voicemail hotline, 302-464-TFFB. Let's jump into a voicemail question. Hey, ballers, huge fan of the show. Uh, just wondering about uh, Jarek McKinnon with the Chiefs. They did resign him, and yet he seems like he's not even being drafted in redraft mock drafts. So just wondering if you should try to pick him up uh, as one of your last picks on your bench or maybe wait and see uh, if he's still on waivers. Thanks. Have a good one. Yeah, so the question is, you know, relevance of Jarek McKinnon after the strong finish to last year. I agree with the caller. Like, he has not been talked about enough this offseason. It does seem to me like knowing what the Chiefs do, Andy Reid, confidence levels at running back, this is probably a big fantasy blind spot because when you're you're coming off a title that he played a, a, a huge role in and teams play the players they trust, they brought him back, you know, I don't think consistency is something you're going to be able to look at from maybe any of the running backs in Kansas City. They throw, I mean, Jason's brought it up repeatedly, they throw so much around the goal line so that kind of like automatic uh, situation is gone. And, you know, Clyde Edwards or Lair will be back. That is, to me, the most interesting point for Jarek McKinnon. Jarek McKinnon's been pretty valuable two years in a row. Towards the end of last year, he was unbelievable. And it was in the passing game around the goal line receiving touchdowns. In fact, his last 16 games he he had a 17 game pace of 22 receiving touchdowns which obviously uh is impossible for yeah. anyone let alone a running back but that stretch of games uh th weeks 13 through 18 Clyde edwards helaire wasn't there he played uh through and then i think he was out starting week 12 yes. so it it correlated exactly when Clyde was gone where Jerick McKinnon went from a piece of the offense to an important piece yeah, of the offense uh, rb1 rb21 rb6 in the playoffs in fact, an article on ESPN talking about some of the players standing out at each camp mentioned another running back in Kansas City, Daenerik Prince. Mm -hmm. So you do have a crowded backfield, um, but he was successful, right? Like this was a, a success. It wasn't a, de, you know, de facto, oh, man, we wish Clyde was in there and he would have been – like Clyde hasn't been that level of a success. So, uh, yeah, you know, I, depending how it shakes out, I would take a deep, uh, a late-round flyer on Jarek for sure. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm Maybe not you're less, sure. Less I'm bullish. less. I'm personally less bullish. If this is uh, underdog best ball where you're going 18 rounds, absolutely, he should be drafted. But if you're talking about your home leagues, your redraft leagues, I think there's probably better options because Pacheco should be back. He he had uh, offseason surgery. I think it was his ankle, but he should be back. Clyde should be back. The new rookie coming in. And they waited to sign Jarek McKinnon until after the the NFL draft I think they see value in him but he wasn't like necessarily a guaranteed part of their plans I I believe they wanted uh Jameer Gibbs and when they didn't get him they're like okay McKinnon you're back the uh, I, I mentioned uh on a, a recent show talking about uh we were talking about Austin Eckler overperforming at touchdowns how running backs usually have a rushing touchdown for about uh, every 135 rushing yards or so well if you want to look at that for receiving yards a running back Looking at the entirety of the position, they score a touchdown on about every 189 receiving yards. Last year, Jarek McKinnon had 512 receiving yards and nine touchdowns. That puts his touchdown scoring pace compared to average at a 331 percent. I, mean, I still it's think I just think, it's not. It I is think I'm not in. a sustainable thing. I think I'm in on him. Yeah, I do. I you at know 31. Well, like, are I, you? I I I just. I know that the trusted players on this team is a short list in the passing game. Let me give it to you. Travis Kelsey, Jarek McKinnon. Like, you had Juju Smith-Schuster. He's departed. So you still have – so we're going to talk about Rashi Rice, and we're going to talk about Sky Moore. We're going to talk about uh, uh, the name I'm forgetting coming over from New York. Kadarius Tony. Well, no, but Trust and Kadarius Tony are not corollary. He came from Richie New York. James. Richie James. Richie James. Yep. Thank you, Kyle. Uh, Marquez no. Valdez Scantling. Yeah, th this is what I'm saying. Like from a from that, we saw it with sure. uh, Damian Williams. Y yes, and uh, if and you have trust in the passing game with a player, I I'm not saying that you guys are going to be wrong. I'm just saying I think I buy into There's... the fact that he he could be a player that you take at the end of your draft and you're starting by week two every week. I I can see the path because you saw it happen last year, but again, 
just highlighting the the takeover for Jarek McKinnon happened uh, basically identically when Clyde edwards alaire was out, and Clyde had that role to start the this year. You had three catches, four, five, and Clyde Edwards his his overproduction at the beginning of the year was all touchdowns as well. So I can see the path, and and it's it's nothingness. You know, it's a really really low opportunity cost pick. So. I guess it Maybe. does it does have to do with your confidence that Clyde will get work back in and that there will yeah. be confidence. Like I don't know, is this guy fourth on the depth chart? Is he I don't two? Know. I, I don't know that right now, and so another camp battle to watch. I think that I think Clyde will be worked back in. The 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 problem for Clyde is is not that he's a bad player. It's that the Chiefs set themselves up for the expectations of this is a first round running back, and then he wasn't he didn't have the skill or the talent level to be a first round running back, more like a third round guy. So if they, if they had drafted him the third, I think everything We'd have a different perspective. Everything on Clyde is completely changed. It's, I bet you wouldn't have him on your dynasty team. Oh no, I would have Jonathan Taylor on my team. <laughs> <laughs> um you're right. It'll be uh the truth is that backfield is going to be messy. And that that you know, Jason, you haven't had a lot of confidence in Pacheco as a draft selection either because of the same reasons. So uh, I this is a questionable decision, Brooks. On this next um, mailbag question, you allowed a question from a Twitter handle, uh, uh, Cabbage Farts. I like it. Who amongst us has not had cabbage farts? I try to keep those to a minimum. I mean, due to not eating cabbage. Oh what? Oh, I love. You're cabbage. a big cabbage. Oh, cow. I love. You cook cook that up. Mm. Cooked cabbage yeah. is gross. <laughs> no, no. Yeah. no. Oh, Hawaiian food? Wait, you so can... we've got one cabbage guy on the show? Oh. That could be your new nickname, Big Cabbage. Oh, yeah. There, there you go. <laughs> He's the hit man. <laughs> yeah, I'm the fantasy hit man. And I, you're... Do have to, I do have to find a new name you're, you're now. Right. Big, big Cabbage? Oh, you, you, know, you guys are wild. Get cabbage that, Patch Kid? Get that. Uh, get, get the Hawaiian barbecue chicken on the mm. cabbage mm. with the broccoli. Ooh, and then you end up stuff. with a Twitter oh, yeah, handle yeah, like yeah, this. Yeah, you get the farts. Uh, full PPR keeper question. Cooper Cup in the third Chris Olave in the seventh. Ooh, interesting. It's there's no way I'm not taking it's, Cup. There. Yeah, Olave. It's now like if you said Cooper Cup in the first, Olave in the seventh. Does it change? Probably. I think then. I I'd, think I'd it take changes then because yeah. you could potentially still draft Cooper Cup in the first with your first round pick that you retain. I was going to go the other way. Like, how far back does Olave have to go? Is and is there? I don't far think there is. Back. I don't think there's a far enough back. If if Chris Olave was there for a 16th rounder, I mean the difference between a seventh and a 16th, the seventh isn't. You know the the players there, they're okay. You, you're going to have some hits, but you're going to have a lot of misses there. This is really about having the potential number one wide receiver in all of fantasy. Yeah, Chris Olave, a game breaker, and getting him for a third round pick. So uh, yeah, it, it is definitely Cooper Cup in the third. Mike is bringing me perpetual life with his Chris Olave <laughs> oh, man. adoration. I am in. I mean, I tried to get him in our dynasty league. Did you? I did. It didn't work. Not get him. I did not trade for him. Uh, all right. Um, <laughs> okay. So we're all going Cooper cup there. Yeah. A couple of IR rules questions. YouTube question. How many IR spots should there be on a 12 team league? Two, two. Okay. Two. Yeah. Sometimes you just you need one. Or do you Sometimes want that's just the answer. Uh, YouTube question. Last year, one of my players was suspended, and I could not put him on IR. Your thoughts? That's yeah. how it works. Yep. The NFL can't either. A suspension is not an injury. <laughs> right. Uh, that would be great if I'm they... injured when you're, they're suspended. Like <laughs> emotionally, it hurts, I'm emotionally yeah. hurt, and it hurts my team. We've I, we've played on several different platforms, and we had a year where I think it was on was NFL. The, oh, is that uh, yeah? And, one of the platforms. And we could put I or suspended players in the IR, and it felt gross yeah I'm real dirty i mean i did it for sure if the platform, <laughs> yeah, if the platform lets you you gotta do it. it yeah you you play to the rules that your platform has but i don't think a suspended player should be able to put in a spot designed for someone who has sustained an injury and most leagues don't allow it which means decisions on players like alvin Kamara this offseason will become more complicated if we get clarity if he's missing two games three games whatever it is maybe it's none but if he's missing yeah. time your decision in the draft isn't just like I get to wait. It's do I get to wait and lose a bench spot? Mm -hmm. And the first few weeks of the year when you're picking up waiver wire players, you're taking flyers, you're costing yourself something. It, I mean, that was that was the Hopkins decision last year. Right, six weeks. Is you had to carry him, and that was a, a long time. By week four, you're like, oh, 
Honestly, the Hopkins, best. Hopkins, you're killing me. If you're going to do it with a player suspended that long, just let somebody else carry him for about four of those weeks and then go and trade for them and pay Good. the price for about two. Uh, all right, question from Instagram. Ad Rocco says, thoughts on Adam Thielen for the upcoming season? I laugh because I don't. I expected uh, to hear like a, a groan yeah, from ca cabbage farts is what you would expect <laughs> to hear in response to how we're feeling about basically thirty three year old Adam Thielen. Um, he's he got some quiche. He got some quiche. He got I am fourteen million super, guaranteed. Super happy for him. He his very his well. His competition is nothing. No, he he very well might be the number one wide receiver for this team. I would expect him to be. I have him statted to be the number one wide receiver. And that's just not over that under, valuable. Over under eight hundred yards. Under. Under. Over under seven hundred yards. Under. I think of. Uh, I, I could I'm, say like ten yards, and Mike will be like, he, Meh. he will not be the, the number one. Jonathan Mingo will be the number one wide receiver on this team. Wow, that's not gonna. Happen. I think Adam Thielen will be consistently targeted. If, if Adam Thielen goes out and does what he did last year, seventy for seven sixteen and six, he won't do that. He won't do that. No, I have him. I, there's got to be a bet here. Yeah, if you're pro Thielen, you can find a bet. The Hitmen are <laughs> on the other side. Wait, the Hitmen. Uh, we took a contract. Six, 650 yards receiving? I've got him under that. I've got him at okay. 632. Michael certainly be in on receiving this. Yards. No, 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 no. That's not the line. You don't get to move it all the way down to where I have him ranked. 700. I don't feel 100% sure about 700 seven. yards is not a good season, to be clear. For oh, fantasy. I, I'm aware. If he gets 701, that's a bad season. And I'm that's excited, the line. I'm excited for a spurt from Adam Thielen in the beginning of the year. I'm not as excited about the back half of the year where he has perennially disappeared. Let me see. Where, oh, I gave him 788. Okay, so 700. And Chark is there, 690. Right? 699, and I'll take it. <laughs> oh, my gosh. We'll, we'll go 700. <laughs> Water bet. I, I do not really want to be betting on Adam Thielen. And yet you have done it. I have done it. He's... Also in my dynasty league. Um, oh, there it yeah. is. There and it the is. the truth <laughs> shall set you free. There are, there there are bets is. you can make to be optimistic about an outcome you want. Yeah, there are bets you can lose. give yourself optimism and lose that money uh, they all the, over the place. They call those bets A-Robs. Yeah. You, you, yeah. you A-Rob yeah. yourself. Yeah. yeah. It's like a robbery. Yep. Um, all right. Uh, Who? You still got him? Unfortunately. <laughs> I believe I out, I asked our league yesterday if they... Yes, you did. <laughs> over under 250 yards this year for, <laughs> for A-Rob. I forget. I think you can get over that. He's on the Pittsburgh Steelers, yeah, everybody. I, I, f I forget. when I, you know, We've been talking a lot about Deontay Johnson, uh -huh. and I, I brought up the fact that they lost Chase Claypool, and I <laughs> I forget that you should have Al given Robinson me six fifty. The underdog underdog line for Theon is five seventy five. Ooh, you First took all, a bad. Why bet. would why would you pay a guy with that line fourteen million guaranteed? I guess you have it to you, spend because you don't have a choice. Yeah, you don't have any white outs. Yeah, um, and nobody wanted to come. I yeah, Al Robinson's dynasty trade value is currently in dirty diaper range. That's about where. Yeah, not even, I, not even clean diapers. Nobody even offered me one. <laughs> And I was looking for one. You wanted a dirty I diaper. I would rather have it. Because then you could just throw that away. But you can't. Yeah. You don't know how to get rid of Alan I don't Robinson. know how to get rid of I mean, I guess I could do the vindictive drop to waivers. Oh, you should. It but would if be you a do good, that, you got a screen record. Yeah, that's fair. It would be a nice social experiment. I wonder. Oh, he's getting picked up. I, oh, he'll, yes. He will get picked up. But for how much fab? Over under oh. 15. Oh, I assumed it would be for free. Uh, okay. <laughs> it'll be over 15. Someone always makes a mistake on Allen Robinson. You're talking about a player that finished at 24 <laughs> in week two, 14 in week six, and 17 in week 11? Man, His consistency he rating just, across those three games was outstanding. He just So he turned it on. He needed Baker Mayfield. Oh, my gosh. These, these numbers – uh, 12 yards receiving, 7 yards receiving, 12 <laughs> yards receiving, 24 yards receiving. What's his snap count, though? Probably didn't play hardly any. Uh, we're going at an average of 91%. <laughs> it sucks. <laughs> How did that happen? I don't know, man. He, he, he got one of them invisibility cloaks <laughs> once he ran the route. Oh, my gosh. It's not like Cooper Cup got hurt, right, and gave him an opportunity <laughs> midseason? Wow. That didn't work out. I'm sorry, everybody. For, I have Kyle, on my he, dynasty team because I decided to put my money where my mouth was. 
Kyle, he ranked 10th in routes run <laughs> on the season? No. Wow. That's not possible. No, through, the fir- through the first six weeks. Oh, first he was six tenth weeks. In routes okay, okay. Number one in end zone targets in through the first, first six, six weeks. <laughs> okay. Wow. That's what made it so painful. Wow. Is the, the end zone targets were coming, uh, and then they were going. Yeah. Brutal. Next question. Brooks, we got time for another one? Yeah, let's got one more. Instagram question from Mr. Fantastic FFB. Is James Cook a mega sleeper? Or will Damian Harris be too involved? Uh, I think I think he's a mega sleeper. I oh, do, really? I absolutely do. I do too, but I was sure you were on no, the other we, side. We both have him ranked significantly higher than Mike does. I think James Cook can run away with the job. If you if you live in the world that you do, Jason, okay. where you believe that Devon A. Chain, despite his stature, can be a predominant, valuable fantasy asset in the AFC East on a team with other backs. Mm-hmm. You have to believe in the world where James Cook can do that too. And I do. Now, James Cook does not have the juice that A-Chain has. Oh, he's got juice, baby. He does. I mean, last year, he had a pretty good season. He averaged 5.7 yards per carry, had a lot of explosive runs. He obviously was behind Devin Singletary, and it wasn't until the end of the season where you started to see him get more involved, get 56, 41, uh, 43% of the snaps. Because the first part of the year, I mean, you're talking about a guy who wasn't really playing. 3% of snaps, 18, 14% of snaps, 5% of snaps. He wasn't involved, and he was a rookie. But what you saw on film, when given the opportunity, was a lot of explosive plays. I could see two things happening this year. I could see Damian Harris, who I believe is just a really good running back. Yeah, I think he's he's good. He's just a solid veteran running back. I could see him being the number one for this team, the way Devin Singletary was, and then they kind of use James Cook as that change of pace, speedster, smaller back kind of like they did at the end of last year. If that happens, neither one are going to be valuable. Or James Cook is the guy that they drafted in the second round to be their starter, and they brought in Damian Harris to back him up. If that happens and they give James Cook the opportunity, I think he's going to crush. I think he's going to be really, really electric. Uh, You know, you're, you're not going to be able to stack the box against him, and if you give him a lane, he can be gone. Well, and he, he's very, very good at finding a – a place to be as a check down for, for Josh Allen. I think that is the secret sauce that will get, get him and keep him on the field. How productive that is. If you're great at that in between the twenties and you get, don't get to score touchdowns, that is a problem. Do you think Devin Singletary or Damian Harris is a better running back? Devin Singletary. Yeah. So, Pretty I mean, I think close. that, I think that too, I think Singletary is a little bit better. I think they're both going to play that role fine, but yeah, mega sleeper for me. Absolutely. And it just, it hasn't been, very valuable. I, like Singletary would have his games every no, once it in a while, but it hasn't. since 2018, as a team, Bills running backs have ranked 26th, 23rd, 30th, 30th, 31st in total fantasy points. Like there just there hasn't been any level of consistency. I have it ranked that. I mean, to it it was not surprising at all to see the Bills immediately scoop up Damian Harris, who they played twice a year for a few years, and Damian Harris made them look foolish on multiple occasions. Was he ever active on those games? Harris? No. I, I, oh, oh how, he was just banged up so often. Yeah, it, which that's that's fair. But I, I think that Harris is very good, and he profiles more as the 1A. And I think James Cook is the secondary option. Yeah, you have some teams that are going to be very good in the AFC East whose running back rooms right now are not – I mean, you're – these two players are the eighth and tenth round, Damian Harris and, and, and James Cook. They're both potential values. Mm-hmm. And then you look at Miami. We haven't got through a mock draft where their current starter isn't maybe not drafted. Stop saying that. <laughs> Jeff Wilson is uh, not there. No, Raheem starter. Moster is their starter. Nope. AJ. I mean, yes, he is. Nope. It's, it's nope. A-Chain. Jeff Wilson is You don't need good. him to – you don't need A-Chain to be the, the depth chart starter – to do everything you think he can do. That is true. But, but by midseason, he'll be the starter, unless Dalvin Cook signs. Which, that's what I mean. And then Dalvin Cook could also go to New York. Which you are, you have been, <laughs> you've probably got incantations and candles and all sorts of prayers. I didn't even hear what you said because I blocked that out <laughs> yeah, so hard. You don't even respond. I have that muted in real life. Yeah, that's just, <laughs> it didn't show up on my timeline in life. <laughs> all right, let's move on. Best Ball Breakdown, presented by Underdog Fantasy. 
All right, every every week right now we are uh, jumping into Best Ball Breakdown, taking a look at some different topics in best ball, and uh, we wanted to dive into a specific round, a little bit of a ADP price check, um, look at round five in best ball drafts, and you know, you've kind of got your studs in the first four rounds. Roster construction is taking form. Uh, what are you looking for from picks 49 to 60, that fifth round? Got some names out there uh, that, you know, the current ADP, Christian Kirk, Justin Fields, Hawkinson, Mixon, Ayuk, Walker, Aaron Jones, Herbert, Godwin, Dobbins, Hollywood, Kittle. That's the names that are in that range right now. So what is the target and what does your exposure look like to those names? So I'll jump in first. My target is going to depend a little bit upon my roster construction. I'm in this range, I'm usually taking another running back or wide receiver. More often than not, a wide receiver, just depending on, on, on how my team is built. If I grabbed two running backs early, then I'm then I'm focused on wide receivers here. If not, um, then I'll go running back. But when I look at my exposure, there's two players I really like and one player I have a lot of in this range. The player I have a lot of is Joe Mixon. Joe Mixon is in this range because it is not a 100% locked and loaded guarantee that he is on the Bengals to start the season. There's still some personal issues in the air. I I put it at 98% that he's the Bengals week one starter. I, I don't believe that this Super Bowl contending team has any other choice. That's the biggest compelling argument in that favor because you always say watch what the team does. So what did they do? Yeah, where's they their option? They drafted a running back in the fifth round. Yeah, fifth yeah, round running so. back while letting Samaj P. Ryan go, and so if the if the they season P. Ryan. if the season were to sure. start tomorrow or or this Sunday and drafts were right now, Joe Mixon is not in this range, um, and that's why I like taking advantage of that. The wide receiver that I target here. Because he's very, very low. He's the 59th player off the board is Marquise Hollywood Brown without DeAndre Hopkins. Uh, I think he's going to have a phenomenal season. Eventually, Kyler will come back. Best ball, you get the entire season. You're going to get all 18 weeks. Um, so I, I really like Hollywood Brown and Joe Mixon, which is pretty high in my exposure. Yeah, I'll throw out Justin Herbert's name. You know, he's in the middle of this uh, bunch of picks. We've talked about him extensively this offseason but the upside there you see the you see the quarterbacks go so early in these best ball leagues wanting to have a stud if you didn't take one roster construction wise here's your chance to get maybe the last upside stud and then I'll bring up Brandon Ayuk a player that you know earlier this offseason the muddied water of of San Francisco the receiving game Brock Purdy things are positive right now I think Brandon Ayuk the you know take it for what you will hype train out of camp the reports have been unbelievable um and i think this is the year i think this is the opportunity we already had uh you know he's 70 receptions over a thousand yards last year i think you're going to get into the 80s on receptions i think you're going to be in 1100 1200 yard range and if you get 9 10 touchdowns on a team that profiles as the nfc east one of their biggest competitors i'm starting to rise on him so i am actively targeting him at this at this value sure and i'm assuming that i've taking a bunch of wide receivers early as that's what I would prefer to do in, in best ball. And because I'm going for absolute ceiling here, assuming I need a running back, I, Jason, I think you are totally right. If we know that Joe Mixon is the week one starter, like as we get into August, he'll jump third round. More, he'll jump, probably jump into the third, maybe even the back of the second. We'll see. But to me, Joe Mixon is, I think his floor is pretty safe, but, I, it would take uh, just some things to swing right in his direction, specifically just a whole bunch of rushing touchdowns for him to make the the leap the leap to be elite. Meanwhile, this guy is he's clamoring, he's trying to get paid, so he still he has his own stuff around him. But J.K. Dobbins, of this group of running backs that we have listed, he would surprise me the least. If you're like, at the end of the season, top five the top five running backs are this 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 and J.K. Dobbins. I think he is that good. I think that that the, means you have to have 15, 16 touchdowns in his well, in his I, range I, of outcomes. I think that he can be uh, like a twelve, thirteen hundred rushing yard guy, and then 
right around the double digit touchdowns and he and he hits breakaway touchdowns all the time where Mixon will have to get the team will have to get down to the five and then he'll have to fall in where Dobbins can do it from literally anywhere on the field with I think, one leg or two yeah and we, yeah we, we JK uh two, two L yeah. here mm -hmm. with, yeah well, if we got two legs this year then he will not be stopped it's just not that it's not the biggest compliment you could pay a guy <laughs> That he has both of his legs functioning. Yeah, but he did it with one leg. Yeah, he had one strong leg, and, and he, he was, was dominating. Now, he was, if it's JK so one leg, yeah. that feels like a compliment because <laughs> he's doing something great with less than. Well, but JK two legs is going to be, like, electric. Yes, he, he'll be like his no rookie No one year. will stop him. I mean, okay. He's got two of them. <laughs> okay. All two right. strong legs. Two strong legs. <laughs> All right, that was Best Ball Breakdown presented by Underdog Fantasy. Get your first deposit matched up to $100 using the code BALLERS. That is going to do it for today's show. We have a mock draft on Saturday, Brooksy. Oh, yeah. With some mayhem. mayhem. Oh, yeah, baby. Stay tuned. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com. And follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.